As you already know by now, any cell that I have selected down below, if I want to find out the default name for that cell, all I have to do is come up here and look in the name box, and there it is, C13. Well, here I'm going to show you how you can assign another name in addition to that cell, that default name, well, for any cell throughout the entire workbook, or any range of cells that you have selected. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, I can think of two reasons. One is that you can use these name cells or range of cells to quickly jump to in a single click, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Second of all, if any of these named ranges include nothing but numbers, you can include that name in any function or formula. For example, you tell me which is easier to remember and to type in. This range here, B5, colon, which means through, B8, into a function or formula, or the name, if I gave it the name, simply Q1, obviously Q1. So let me go ahead and show you how to quickly assign it another name in addition to the default name, either to a cell or a range of cells. Let me go ahead and start with this cell here, B4, up in the name box, there it is, B4. If I want to go ahead and add another name in addition to the default name, just click in that box. Automatically, the default name gets pushed over to the left-hand side. It's highlighted, so all I have to do is just start typing over it, quarter, one. Now you need to know that Excel, when it comes to naming a cell or range of cells, get rid of the space and, well, I'm going to cheat here, hit the shift key, underscore, and then type in one. I know it's not a space, but it looks like one, and it satisfies the uh, rules for not having a space. Let me go ahead and hit enter when I'm finished, and there we go. So Excel still recognizes the cell as B4 and the name that I added in addition to it, quarter one. Now, if I made a mistake and I didn't mean to call it quarter one or I didn't mean for it to include this cell but maybe a different cell or range of cells, or maybe I just want to delete it all together. In any case, if you need to make any of those changes, come up here and click on the Formulas tab, go to the Defined Names group, and then click on Name Manager because we want to manage our names. Click on it and there it is, quarter one. Well, I can go ahead and click and create a new name cell or range of cells, clicking on that, or edit the current selection that I have down below, or delete it. Let's go ahead and click on edit, brings it up. Let me go ahead and change the name up. Let me get rid of that underscore. Let's just have it as quarter one. Down below, go ahead and type in any comments. In any case, when I'm done with my comments, and I want to go ahead and update it to no longer to refer to this cell, just click on its collapsible dialog box button. So it collapses the window, gives us more space. Go ahead and click and drag to select the range, or just click on another cell if you just want a, a single cell. Hit enter on the keyboard to pop back open that window, and then hit enter again, and there we go. How do I know it's referring to that range? Well, there's where it's referring to it, B5 through B8, but look at the values. For B5, 5, 5, 5 12, 12, 3, 3, any case. We're done here. Let's go ahead and close out. To me, that's one of the quickest ways to name a cell or range of cells, is to come up here in the name box and type it. The second way, let me go ahead and show you some additional ways, and you find the way that works best for you. I'm going to go ahead and select the range here of quarter two. Another way to go ahead and to assign a name to a range of cells here is to come up here in the Define Names group and go ahead and click on Define Name. Or click on the drop-down arrow, Define Name, same thing, click on it and automatically Excel because it can recognize the pattern in your database and go, oh, okay, we got a column here. What's above the column? The column label, quarter two. Okay, that's the name I'm going to give it. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Click okie dokie and look at that. The name box reflects what I have selected that was assigned or defined as the new name up here, the label using that for this range down below as quarter two. Cool. We have these two over here. If I want to go ahead and create from selection, Go ahead and select the labels and the data, and then come back up here and click on Create from Selection. Now you know that I got it right if these check boxes are selected one of them, because Excel recognizes that in the top row I have my labels for the data down below. Okay, if I click Cancel, and I go ahead and I click and drag and select that range, I not only select the data, Put the labels over to the left hand side. If I come back up here and click on create from selection, by default Excel knows and can see that there are labels over to the left hand side so it checks it for you. Click okie dokie and hmm, let's see what happens. Go ahead and select the range here and it's California. You can see the name range there, California. Click on the drop down arrow, let's go to New York. Click on it, boom, takes me right to that range. 
Okay, let's go ahead and use one of these in a formula. Let me click down below and type in equals. Let's use the sum formula. That's really easy. Sum, well, let me hit the down arrow key. There's sum. Once I have it highlighted, hit the tab key, pops it open, and it says, okay, give me the first range. Well, if I'm typing it in and I want to include the sum of quarters one through four for Utah, then type in the named range. And you can see when I start typing, see that little tag down below? We learned in uh, level one, when it comes to typing in functions, not only does it bring up a list of functions, but if there's a named range or a named cell, it pulls it up down below. I can either finish typing, or once it's selected, hit the tab key on the keyboard and boom, automatically it's got it selected. It's got Utah down below in the uh, formula, hit enter, and there we go, 29. One quick side note, you know that when I come up here and I click on the drop down arrow, I can select and jump right to a named range, or another way is we learned about the go to feature. When you hit the F5 key on the keyboard, you also can go to your named ranges from the go to window as well. So go to Utah, click okie dokie, goes right to it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.